Fairfax Paper. Thanks, Steve. Okay, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to class. Today we'll have uh, Nikhil. <laughs> Nikhil, uh, who is from which place, Nikhil? Which place? Oh, Uttar Pradesh, UP. He's going to pray for us. Want to go a little more at the back so I think they can see you? Back, piche, piche, piche. Oh, uh, no, we can't see you still. Okay, no worries. You can bend if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Nikhil is going to lead us in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Prabhu Ji, we thank you for your time in the morning. And once again, we come to your heart. We look at your heart in front of you. We look at your heart in front of you. We pray in the morning in the morning. We pray in the morning in the morning. We pray in the morning in the morning. We pray in the morning in the morning in the morning. We pray in the morning in the morning. We pray in the morning in the morning. We pray in the morning in the morning in the morning. हम मदद करें ताकि परमेश्वर वो हमें सिखाएं और हम अपने जीवन से रिसीव करें और उसको सीखने पाए प्रभु जी और परमेश्वर पवित्र आत्मा आपसे विनती करते हैं कि आप जरूर से हमारी सहायता करें ताकि हम उन शब्दों को उन चीजों को समझ सकें प्रभु हेल्प करें सहायता करें यीशु के नाम से प्रार्थना हमें थैंक यू निकल सो दैट वॉज निकल स्टूडेंट फ्रॉम यूपी एस उत्तर प्रदेश नॉर्थ इंडिया सो Our e-learning students are basically from all around the world. So he didn't pray in tongues, but uh, <laughs> he prayed in Hindi, which is the language uh, spoken mostly in North India. Uh, he's more comfortable praying in his own language. So I said, OK, go ahead. OK, good morning, everyone. And uh, good to see um, Karen, Shiv Kumar, Prabhu, Jaychin, Prince, Samuel, and Nina. I can't see you all, but thank you for joining online class. And uh, good to see all our uh, uh, in-person students, welcome everyone to class. Um, uh, last week we began uh, looking at the book Core of Honor. Okay, and I post for those of you who are in the online class is posted on the stream page. Um, in our e-learning students, it's you can see it on the tab right, uh, you know, next to course discussions. Uh, you will also find all the three uh, publications, the books that we are studying uh, in the e-learning uh, platform. Okay. Uh, so we began looking at chapter two. We were looking at family and we basically said this whole book is addressed to pastors, uh, uh, those in ministry. Uh, so basically, you might be thinking, okay, this is not relevant for me, but uh, it's also relevant if, you know, you're going to be pastors, you're going to be in the ministry soon, you're going to get married, if you're not still married, uh, if, you're, um, if you're married and then you are, you know, um, uh, you know, doing a secular job, but also involved in ministry, uh, this can help. So just uh, keep your hearts and minds open to receive and to learn and uh, this more practical learning. Uh, so you can apply this in your everyday life. Okay, so we are looking about uh, looking at family, um, and we saw that um, you know the three postures that we read in the Bible, and we saw that you know all three postures are important. Um, uh, we also looked at how uh, a man has to uh, nurture his spouse, his children, uh, nurture their relationship with the children as well, work to provide for the uh, family. Okay. Um, and we ended last week by looking at how we need to pursue God's call. Yes, uh, family is important, um, but you know, when it comes to God's call, you know, God's call is more important than family ministry. So it's first God, second is your family, third is your um, ministry. And that does not mean when you know when you're pursuing God's call, does not mean that you compromise your other son, but you also don't compromise your love for God and your obedience to his call. At the same time, you don't compromise your um, uh, responsibilities towards your own um, family. Now, most times what happens is, you know, uh, the man of the house thinks uh, he only has the calling uh, and he's supposed to be the breadwinner. He's supposed to earn for the family and the wife has to support his calling, whatever God has placed in his life. So the wife has to support uh, the husband in his calling, take care of the family, take care of the children so that the husband is free to do his uh, work. But we fail to understand that even a wife or a, your or spouse has, they have their own calling. God has a vision, a plan and a purpose uh, for your spouse as well and it's important as um, 
uh, it is for a man to fulfill his calling and purpose in life it's also important that you know um uh, he also is able to see what is his wife's calling his children's calling what is god's plan and purpose for their life and help them to uh, fulfill that okay if you read in psalm 128 verse 3 it says your wife shall be a fruitful vine okay uh, the fruit of the vine basically in the bible symbolizes joy and pleasure okay page number 41 in the book sorry yeah in the book page number 41 It's 37 for y'all? Okay, I don't know how it's different. It's also 37? Okay, it's 37 then. Okay, um, mine is showing 41 here for me. Okay, so encourage your spouse. If your spouse is a fruit for wine, um, uh, you know, the fruit of the wine basically stands for joy and uh, pleasure. Okay, so your spouse can be a joy and pleasure for you. Uh, if you support your wife, if you are able to see God's calling, vision, plan and purpose for them, uh, nurture your wife in their calling and also encourage them to find uh, their satisfaction, their fulfillment in, uh, you know, pursuing God's call for their own life. If your wife is dissatisfied or your spouse is dissatisfied, uh, it will, uh, you know, it will end up in them living unfulfilled lives. And then, you know, what happens, right? There will only not be um, a fruit of the wine, which is bringing joy and pleasure in the home. But there will be sourness, there will be bitterness. Um, and they will, uh, you know, they will only reflect sour grapes. Okay. That is why there's a lot of um, fighting in families because, you know, one partner is unfulfilled in what they are doing. They're frustrated, they're angry. Because, you know, um, they are not able to do what they want to do. They are not able to fulfill God's call. They are just doing the mundane um, activities and the mundane um, things. Okay, so as um, it's nice if a husband and wife, both of them are called to the same ministry. But at times when a husband is called into ministry, the wife is not called. But uh, the husband needs to ensure that the wife also fulfill, fulfills her call uh, and the purpose that God has for her. Um, life okay in the same way we need to encourage our children uh, sometimes what happens is when you know uh, we are if we don't fulfill our own dreams in our own life uh, we want to see it fulfilled in our children's lives right uh, like many parents they wanted to become engineers or doctors or teachers or whatever and they're not able to or business people they're not able to do that and so when they have their children they get them to do, become engineers or doctors or uh, teachers or fulfill their dreams in their children okay but we need to understand uh, or sometimes if you're a pastor you've started your own church you started your own ministry organization then you want that to run like business after you so then you say okay i i have my two children and i will you know uh, get them send them into bible college i will send them to bible school i train them so that when i'm not there anymore you know or get old they can run my business that becomes a family business ministry okay but we need to understand that you know um God has not made us as duplicates. You know, husband and wife don't have children as duplicates. Okay, we each one of us are creative. Each one of us have different talents, different gifts that God has given to us, different functions in the body of Christ, uh, different uh, abilities, different talents, um, different potentials that he's given to us. So we need to see what is God's talent and potential that he's given in your children you need to identify them you need to help them to build on those talents guide them lead them uh, direct them and mold them to become what god has purposed and planned for their um, lives okay so if you are a preacher or a missionary doesn't mean that you have to make your son a, a pastor or a missionary okay if you're having a business doesn't mean that you raise up your children to run your business after you so that you know your all that you worked hard will not go futile but we need to understand that they have their specific calling and we need to nurture them in their own calling okay and also as parents we need to set an example a godly example at home you know sometimes we are preaching to our children but um, our children learn more by seeing than just hearing 
okay if you are preaching in the pulpit uh, pulpit if you are uh, preaching uh, teaching in the uh, in our in our bible study groups whatever or having life groups at home and we're preaching to people and teaching and that our children and our spouse are not able to see that in our own lives then they are not going to they 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 will basically hate christianity they will be basically hate uh, the ways of god they will also not come to liking god so what we need to do is we need to be living examples at home you know uh, we can act like angels we can be very godly outside but at home you know we can just be the opposite but it's at, at home it's our children and our spouses who are watching us and if they're not able to see jesus and whatever we are teaching and preaching to them they will not follow they will not um, uh, you know go in that because they will see that see us as hypocrites okay um doing something saying something and doing something else or preaching something and doing something um, else so we need to uh, set an example in the way that we live before our uh, children and then you don't even have to teach them some things like honesty and humility and loving people it will just automatically follow because they're just learning it by watching you okay don't preach to your spouse and also don't preach to your children uh, for those of us who are married, don't preach to our uh, parents. Now, when we go back home, you know, we think we are coming from Bible college. We know everything. Uh, so we can preach and teach them how to pray, how to sing, how to uh, lead worship, how to worship God. Uh, things that we learn from the Bible, we can, you know, go on and on and on and on. Okay, there's a right time when we can use testimonies, when we can bring about different things that we learn from different men and women of God, sermons, some points, um, some Bible verses. We can bring it out at different instances, but not when we are correcting our family people or not when you're having an argument with your spouse. When you're having an argument with your spouse or children, don't please say, you know what God says in the Bible, it says in Ephesians chapter 2, blah, 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 blah. In Psalms chapter 23, blah, 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 blah. So this is what you need to do. You know, they'll get irritated. So when you're having an argument with your spouse or your children, you know, try to reason with them, try to think with them, try to hear them, uh, try to discuss uh, and come to a conclusion. Please don't use chapter and verse. Uh, it's the worst thing to do uh, when you're having an argument, you're trying to discuss something. Uh, but, you know, at other times you can, of course, you know, um, teach them through uh, scripture and verse or through some uh, testimonies. Okay. Um, when you're having, when you come to the family, you know, when you're having family time, don't carry uh, what uh, you know if you're working in a secular place what your boss did you know some some people are like that they constantly go on and on and on this is what my boss did this is what this person did in office that person did you know uh, we go on or sometimes you know if we are ministers we say you know this person came uh, they shared this problem with me so sad they're going through this problem you know they lost this loved one and the children and the wife can get bored Okay, you need to, when you are having family time and you come back home, leave your office, leave your uh, church, your uh, Christian organization, wherever you're working, just talk to the children, ask them how their day was, um, you know, hear them, ask your spouse how her day was, you know, um, discuss things with them, discuss family things, um, you know, some things that happen on the way, on the road, you can discuss, uh, you know, children are very excited to share things with the parents and they know that their parents have no time to listen to them. If you don't have time to listen to your children, when you have to tell them something, they won't have time to listen to you. Okay, and they will go find their friends in Google. They will go find their friends on on internet. They can get lost. They can get into unwanted sites. They can um, listen to their friends, and then when you're trying to teach them Christian values, they will not listen to you because you are not having time to listen to them. They'll say, "I will listen to my friends." Why? Because their friends have time to listen to. So you, if you want to instill in them godly values, you need to spend time, listen to them, talk to them uh, in their level, in their understanding, uh, what interests them. You need to know, parents need to know what interests their children. Different children have different uh, interests. You know, so speak about their interests. Um, you know, think about their interests. So what are you doing? You know, uh, you, you like painting. So I think now you, uh, I can, can I, we can, we go this weekend and get some uh, more books so that you can learn, you know, just not how to paint what somebody else has drawn. Why don't you start drawing? Um, 
how do I do that? You can show them through internet, Google, how they can just uh, draw uh, learning tips, videos. So, you know, when you, when your children know that you're uh, interested in what interests them, then when you're trying to teach them precious, valuable lessons in life, um, whether it's moral values or godly values, they will listen to um, you. Okay, so um, spend time with your children, uh, you know, even as your ministry goes, you'll be very, very busy. Don't think it's uh, husbands usually think it's the wife's um, responsibility to take care of the children. Okay, to uh, to teach them, to train them. Um, and, uh, you know, um, that's why we see that uh, some children have only good relationship with their mothers not with their fathers because their fathers never had time to spend with them okay so it's important that um, you know we know that god first um, family second and ministry comes um, third okay um, now doing some uh, you know uh, getting your children um, to show your children that you're interested in their lives is not just being at home and taking your laptop or you're preparing for the sermon and you're saying i'm always at home and when a child is doing something they're fighting you just scream I want notes, noise now. I'm preparing my uh, sermon. Silence. Or go out and you know, go out and uh, play. Or don't make noise. Or uh, put off that TV. So sometimes you say, you know, I've always been at home around my children. But you've been there. But you've been busy doing your own things. You're not doing things that interest um, them. Okay. So uh, it, it's important that you um, speak into their lives, look at what they interest them. And um, you know, again, um, a right to also speak into their lives and write upon their um, hearts. Okay. Uh, the next thing is uh, put family first before ministry. We've already spoken about this. Um, uh, the next one is guard your family while ministering to people. OK, sometimes, you know, when you are in the ministry, uh, whatever, you know, you're serving a Christian organization or you are a preacher, teacher, or a life group leader, a deacon in the church, a pastor, a minister, whoever you are, then, you know, you are uh, not only you are in the focus, but also your family, your wife and your children are also in the focus. So anything they do, you know, they are pinpointed. So uh, it. You know, people think that, you know, uh, the pastor's wife should always be available at home to entertain people, uh, always be available to entertain people, give them tea, coffee when they come to the pastor's home, uh, always be with the pastor, take care of the children, uh, be part of the Sunday school, uh, you know, and uh, the children should be like angels. Any mistake, they'll, you know, say your pastor's child, you're doing this, shame on you, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, the children learn to tend to think that, okay, when I'm in church, I need to behave like an angel, okay? But when I'm at home, when I'm in school, I can do whatever I want. I can be myself. And that is why, you know, uh, many pastor's children and uh, uh, Christian minister's children, uh, you know, they tend to get out of hand because they're not able to be themselves all the time because they know that people will not accept them. Okay, so we need to just accept, uh, don't put pressure on your children and your spouse to be a certain type, to please people, let them be who they are, um, you know, who God has created them to be. Um, that's why we see many pastors' children and ministers' children growing up to be very, very rebellious. Okay, so you need to, another thing is you need to guard your home. Uh, your home is a place where it's a place only for the husband, wife, and the children not for everybody not for everybody okay so sometimes uh, the pastor's home can be a constant place of people coming for counseling uh, for um, uh, for meetings for uh, uh, you know different things and the children have no uh, you know, place to, uh, you know, just to be themselves. They're constantly in their room. They can't uh, move around, you know, because uh, keep quiet. There is a meeting going on. Somebody's come to meet dad. Somebody's come here for counseling and they're just bugged. Okay. And they don't want to be at home. Okay. And also when we're doing Christian ministry in terms of having an organization, we need to be very, very uh, careful. I've um, I've uh, seen uh, examples of two people who've um, started these um, uh, 
working with youth uh, youth and you know they they open up their homes to uh, all kinds of youth to drug addicts alcoholics and all of them and i remember you know working with one uh, christian organization you know where finally that um, the older daughter of, of the people who started this organization finally ran away with a drug addict because their home was open to every kind of people to come in see and the parents were so busy uh, ministering they were not able to oversee their children and finally what happened one of the older daughters very sadly uh, ran away with a uh, drug addict and of course their marriage did not end well it was a very sad state another case where um, uh, you know a couple were into youth ministry uh, relate you know um, ministering to every kind of people they didn't have enough time for their own children their own girls and one of the girls you know became an alcoholic and drug addict and became very rebellious against the family and finally what happened was that couple stopped doing ministry okay so we need to know where to you know bring about a division we can't uh, you know office is office home is home church is church uh, segregate those things don't bring people into your home guard your family and your uh, children okay and also not only guard your family and your children but also guard your marriage you know a marriage is kind of if you visualize it is a circle where there is a place only for husband and wife not the third person so don't let the third person come into your marriage okay i um, i remember you know um, uh, there's a couple who are going through a marital problem and um, um, uh, you know there was a lady who's very close to this man um, who works in his office um, and she came to this lady and she said i know i've seen how he treats uh, you um, uh, just say the names are ajay and meena okay just keeping ajay so i know meena how ajay is uh, treating you uh, so you know we both are good friends do you want me to speak to ajay and meena immediately immediately jumped up and said no thank you i appreciate uh, uh, your concern but i don't want you to do that uh, i will learn to handle uh, we will learn to handle it and try to resolve things and you know why she, uh, why meena jumped and she said no because this is the same thing that happened in her mother's and father's case mother and father were having marital problems there's a third lady who joined in and tried to help them and finally you know the the father left the, the uh, her mother and went away with this lady see so you know uh, the uh, marriage is a circle for only a husband and wife don't allow another person inside and as a pastor and as a counselor as a minister of god you don't get into another person's marriage even though you are counseling them okay so all women will counsel only women all men will counsel only men even if you're very senior uh, you have many years of ministry experience still does not give you a thing uh, 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 you know does not uh, give you the opportunity or the privilege um, or the take to take the step to uh, you know to counsel a young woman you can do that one or two times but then later on move them to another uh, older person but if the couple says no pastor we want you to be that uh, and you to please and then you have your wife along okay and make sure that you know the counseling sessions are both with the husband and wife together and even if you have to speak separately to them this you're speaking separately to the wife make sure that your spouse is there also you're speaking to them so you need to take all of these steps because you know any little thing we can give um, uh, you know a foothold to the say to satan and you know what he can do if we just give him a little foothold he can destroy the son so your own marriage you can destroy the other person's marriage um, and so it becomes very very difficult and if there is you know there uh, you are going through problems all of us go through problems uh, because we are in ministry we are in bible college we have trained in bible college uh, we are doing god's work does not mean that we don't go through any problems and issues we will all face problems and issues we will all go through marriage problems we will have problems with our children spouses uh, with our in-laws with people we are ministering to uh, we will um, also have problems in the way um, of administration finances how to do certain things at those times you know seek help there's nothing wrong in saying you know hey i need help 
I'm having a problem in this area of my life. Seek help. Don't hesitate. Don't let pride come in your way. Don't uh, be fearful. What will people say? Oh, you know, he's a life group leader. He's an elder. He's a pastor. He's a missionary. He's uh, so many years in the ministry. Doesn't matter. Go to somebody who you can trust. Uh, make sure that they are there to help you to uh, resolve things in your life. You know, uh, don't think that, you know, don't put it away thinking, okay, this will just uh, happen. It's just a time span. It's just a season. It will go away. You know, some things don't go away. Uh, you know, when things don't go away, what happens? It erupts like a, when it erupts, it becomes like a volcano. You know, volcanoes, right? It's, it's always active deep down. It's always boiling deep down. When the pressure becomes out of hand, that's when it blows up. Okay. So you need to, uh, take uh, things into action, otherwise it blows up, then you know what happens when a volcano blows up, right? It destroys so many people around. So it's better to take help before the destruction happens and after the destruction um, happens. So lay aside all your pride, your fear, prayerfully pray and ask God to, you know, to show you who you can lead or go to, or be open to the working of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, it's nothing wrong uh, to uh, get help even as servants of God and even as Bible college students. Even as you're in Bible college now, there are many things in your life, past, present, that still needs to be dealt with. You know, uh, deal with it. Don't cover it up. Don't put it under the pillow. Because later on, you know, it, it becomes like a baggage. We're carrying it. Later on, it will erupt into something more bigger. So talk it out with people. Uh, be open. Uh, be, you know, you can be vulnerable, um, you know, but then get help. It's going to just help you. Okay. The last point is, uh, you know, it's good that, um, and God wants us to pass on, you know, his covenant, his teachings to generations to generations. If you look at Isaiah chapter 59, verse 21, um, you know, God says that this is my covenant with them. My spirit is upon you and my words, which I put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from, nor from the mouth of your descendants, descendants. So God wants whatever, you know, we have learned to be passed on to our next generation. Okay. So that the next generation can build up on the foundation. And it's wonderful, you know, if our generations that come, they're built up, they build uh, on the foundations that we have laid, they're growing spiritually, they're walking with God, um, they're pursuing uh, the heart of God, um, uh, the vision of God for their lives, they're flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. It's all very, very wonderful. It's also wonderful if they have found their own place in ministry, but it does not mean that if you have a church or you have an organization, it's all to be run only by your family, right? That can become very, very disastrous right uh, disastrous in the sense that you know uh, we can put people in different ministry places and they can uh, you know become a disaster um, because this they don't have the calling uh, they have don't have the gifts for it and we see an example in the bible itself anyone knows example in the bible where um, uh, the leaders children you know they continued in the same Eli's sons, yes. Who else? Eli's sons, you know what Eli's sons did, right? Eli was a priest. And automatically his children thought they were also priests. But what were they doing? They were living, um, you know, um, immoral lives. And also they were not being um, doing what was right when it comes to the offerings. You know, the sacrifices that people made in the temple. Yes, Sean? David's son Solomon, okay. Yes, David's sons, we know, we'll come to that example. Yes, that's a good thing. Even Samuel's son, sons, Samuel's sons as well. So they also went away from the Lord. If you, uh, if you look at uh, 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 1 to 3, okay. Even Samuel's uh, children, okay, the sons of Samuel and the sons of Eli, okay. You all didn't know about Samuel's son. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 8 verses 1 to 3. Okay, they also did not keep the ways of the uh, Lord. <laughs> 1 Samuel chapter 8 verses 1 to 3. 1 Samuel chapter 8 verses 1 to 3. Can somebody take the mic and read that loudly? Yes, uh, Nikhil. 
You want to read? Okay, take the mic, please. First Samuel chapter 8, verses 1 to 3. When Samuel uh, grew old, he appointed his sons as Israel's leaders. The name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second was Abijah. And they served at Bishab uh, with Seba, but his sons did not follow, follow his ways. They turned aside after dishonest gain and accepted bribes and uh, perverted justice. Thank you. So here we see the sons of Samuel. Um, they did not walk in the ways of the Lord. They turned aside from those ways. Uh, they took, uh, they were, you know, taking dishonest gain and also took bribes and perverted justice. Okay. Questions? Questions? Uh, no, no, no. Different. Any questions anyone has? Yes, please give the mic to Sean. Sean, you can just move and uh, ask a question. Uh, can we also include uh, Job and his sons and daughters in the in the list? Where um, you know um, he he was he was also type of uh, you know head when he had all, uh, all power, he had all wealth, he had power. God made God made him a very wealthy man. So um, the but his sons and daughters didn't follow the example that Job set. So can you also well, say? It really specifically does not say that Job's uh, children did not follow. Um, it only says that you know they used to all meet together and party and have a nice party time. Uh, but the next day he would uh, you know uh, you know kind of consecrate them and uh, make a sacrifice so that in case they have sinned against God, you know God would forgive them. Yeah, but a good thought. Any questions from our online students as our in-person students are asking uh, questions? Yes. Ma'am, you said uh, God doesn't make duplicates. God doesn't make duplicates. So the whatever the father and the child, they are different. Each person is created individually or something. Uh, then how it work like when the Levites has to take their position according to their tribes and their works has to be the same no? how? yes good question how is the levites, uh, levites. they're calling uh, may see the specific they had a specific calling as priests they had to be uh, trained as priests um, so maybe that is yes their own specific calling but we don't uh, but in our in the new testament times um, yes in the old testament there was a special tribe that was just dedicated to being a priest, to running the temple, to doing various things in the temple. Um, but in the New Testament, we are all called a royal priesthood. You know, we are all priests. Uh, so we, in the sense, we all are into doing ministry and we need to get our children with that mindset that, you know, we have each one of us are ministers of God, we have a calling, but it does not mean that if you are a pastor and you have a calling to be a pastor, that your sons, your children should also automatically become a pastor, should also become in the ministry. Because there are many pastors' children who have not got into ministry. They've done well in their various fields, but yes, they have also, you can also be in the business field and yet, you know, you can win the mountain uh, of business for God, you know. So wherever we are, we are supposed to be a royal priesthood, uh, in that sense, um, we are supposed to bring about God's uh, kingdom, reign, presence, rule, activity, everything, decrees. Um, but, you know, uh, we have our own calling where God wants us to. And God wants us to go into the marketplace. And so, so good good question, good thought. I never thought of it. Too. Yeah, very good. Anyone else? Questions? Okay, Jason says, Samuel's children do not follow the ways of the Lord in spite of him setting an example. How are we as children of God be persistently praying for our children with faith in spite of not seeing a true change uh, within them? Okay, so um, we really don't know whether, uh, you know, it does not say if Samuel and Eli uh, really taught their children 
um, because the Bible says if you teach the children in the ways of the Lord, when they grow up, they will not depart from it. They will not go away um, uh, from it. Okay, so that is God's word. You know, we we always go back to God's word as standard. So, uh, yes, they will not depart from it. And also when we inculcate values in them um, and uh, when we pray, you know, there are some times when we just ne need to let go and just let uh, the spirit of God work in the lives of the children. So it's the spirit of God who works and trains and teaches them. So we can do our, our bit. We can do our best in teaching them, in training them, um, in the ways of the Lord, getting them to love the Lord, not as a ritual, um, uh, you know, but, um, you know, um, uh, not as a ritual, but a real love for God. Uh, so like, you know, Paul writes, we have a form of godliness, but denying its power. So maybe what Samuel and Eli, uh, Eli's children saw was, you know, they just saw them, uh, their fathers doing the practice their rituals for God, they learned those rituals, but maybe they did not inculcate their, in them a love for God, okay? Uh, and that is what was even missing with the Israelites, right? Uh, God says, you are all bringing all these sacrifices, everything, uh, but you know, your heart is so far away from uh, me. You know, there's no love for me. And that's why God says, I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put you my spirit. My spirit will cause you to uh, keep my laws and uh, uh, commandments. Um, so it's maybe these people had the love for God, but they were not able to translate their love for God uh, to their children. Uh, all the children learned was, uh, you know, this and... Uh, they had no true relationship. And that is why it's important for us uh, to get our children to build a true relationship with God. Okay, so that is what we've been saying that when you know they when they watch your life, your example, you're doing what God's word is uh, teaching you, you're living it out, then your children that becomes a norm for them, that becomes a lifestyle for them because they're seeing it at uh, home. So um Sometimes we can be praying for our children, but we can be doing, we have no time to spend with them. Uh, you know, we are not living, ordering our lives the way God wants us to. Um, and, um, you know, and children are able to see. I remember the pastor was, uh, Pastor Ashish was giving this example once. Uh, you know, uh, somebody asked uh, his, his son, I think, um, so um, what do you think about your dad ministry and all that? He says, one thing I know is, you know, my dad practices what he preaches because even if the, uh, if the sign is, uh, the signal sign is, or is orange and is going to turn red, he will just stop. He will not go past the red signal. So even that small signal thing has, you know, uh, past the observing traffic rules has made such an impact in his son's life no use was small that time so children are actually watching the little little things that we do more than what we say and preach to them so if they're seeing the love of god in our lives and what the love of god is translating into then you know um they will learn faith they will learn to love god they will learn to depend on god so basically i had i have very godly parents and all my what i learned about faith and trusting in god and walking in honesty and integrity is what i have seen in my father's life he was in a key position you know he could have done so many things taken so many bribes and things like that but he was a man of uh, you know deep honesty integrity um, you know, times when we needed finances, but uh, he did not uh, you know, uh, venture into dishonest means. And that is what has been instilled in all his four children. We have, you know, to the core, uh, you know, uh, integrity and honesty because of what we have seen in our in our parents' life. They taught us faith. They taught us the love of God. They taught us what it means to depend on God, to trust in him, to see uh, miracles happen in your life. Did that help, uh, J.C.? Okay, very few students attending class today, only seven of them. Okay, any other questions or good questions? Yes. Ma'am, uh, you told that uh, the priorities are God, God, family, and ministry. I know a pastor that he uh, he uh, he thought, uh, sorry, he got a vision from God that they're calling for to go to a mission trip for 10 days. Go for a mission trip, mission for, 10 trip days. for 10 days. 
so on the same time uh, his wife is about to deliver a baby so she is in hospital and the wife parents are gentiles so the pa wife's parents, parents are gentiles gentiles okay so uh, on the delivery uh, on the delivery day uh, somewhat uh, she uh, her, her, the day is her last breath of the wife so the day is the the day is the last breath for her wife Oh, so, she was uh, in labor and it yeah, was yeah. really bad. Okay. So, uh, so she wanted to see his uh, uh, husband on the last day, but she told like, uh, "No, it's a vision from God for me. It's a calling for God for me." And they, their parents got too rude to him, and uh, they, uh, after that, she died, and it, it broke up the relationship. Has got broke up. Uh, how can we prioritize the things you said, like God, family, and ministry, right? On on that particular situations, how we can prioritize things? There's a God calling uh, for a mission trip, and there's a family uh, issue also. On that okay, time. that's a good uh, thing. Okay, God, um, there is this pastor who's had has uh, uh, gone on a mission trip. Okay, and um, God is saying he sensed that God is telling him to go for the mission trip. Same time, it was time for his uh, his wife who was uh, pregnant, uh, you know, to give birth, and uh, sadly she passed away, you know, while giving uh, birth to the baby, right? And that was kind of very heartbreaking for her parents, and it broke the relationship. What do you think the pastor should have done? It's okay, Rin. You can say your you can just voice your opinion. Nothing wrong. Go ahead. It's God telling you, okay? You can come visit and go back, okay? Yes? You will see to your wife and then join later to the ministry? What about the others? I think I would do the same. People are not going to go anywhere. The mission field is going to be really there. People are going to be there. We can go later on and minister to them. But at the time, your, your wife needs you. You'll be there. The children need you. You'll be there. Yes. The, the, the tribe, the village, the people group, they're not going to disappear. They're not going to be raptured. They're going to be there. You can go in two, three days and minister to them. But I think, you know, God would want you to be there with your wife. Yes. Yeah, you have to. God has given us a mind, right? That's what it's a mind. God told him to go for a mission trip. But does he, the, did God say go for the mission trip during that labor days is the question to ask. God told him to go for the mission trip. The mission trip could be before the labor, could be after the labor. It does not mean that God told him to go for the mission trip the very next day, like Abraham right uh, unless he said go the next day the mission trip is there god tells him i wanted to go for a mission trip maybe god is telling him in advance to prepare for the mission trip not that he has to go during his wife's labor so that time you use common sense yeah <laughs> as simple as that and it's so sad yeah it's too late god told him to go but did he say go during that time yeah, Nina says you have to be with his wife. Pastor should be there with family at that time. Yes. So my question is, did God tell him to go during that labor time, for the mission trip? He just told him to go for the mission trip. It could be even later on, prepare for himself and go. Right? Okay, good questions. Anyone else? Francis? Mike, please. Any more questions from our online students? I know. <laughs> we need to get the wireless mic, yes. Yeah. Um, it's my way similar to Anand's. Um, so, uh, okay, it's related to the calling. So, if the husband and the wife, if they differ in their callings, so how um, should they pursue it? 
Good question. Uh, Pastor says in his book, I didn't mention it, but Pastor says in his book that uh, he has a calling to be a pastor. Uh, he also wanted his wife to help in the ministry and all of that. She was doing for certain years, but uh, her calling is to be a. Uh, she was trained, you know, study to be a doctor. See, so for a few years till the children grew up and all, she was at home, not pursuing her uh, her medical uh, field and uh, you know her pursuing her call as a doctor, and also helping out in in the church office in ministry and all that. But once the children grew up, then she knew it was a time for her to launch out into doing what she had studied. And amazingly, she got a call from one of the hospitals in Bangalore City, and now she's uh, pursuing her calling as a doctor. And so Pastor says there are times when she gives in to accommodate his um, um, his um, you know time schedule and all of that, and there are times when he accommodates his time schedule for her. So you work it out. If you're in the same field and it works perfectly well, but if you're in different field, you you know you encourage each other, support each other, give in, and allow the other sometimes rework your schedules just to accommodate. If your wife has to go for a meeting, you stay at home, take care of the children. Like that. The wife is busy finishing a report, uh, cook, or you know, pastor cooks, um, or sometimes get food from outside, or take the children out for a day out. The wife is free to do her things. What if God calls to? Uh, what if God calls? What if God calls um, like one of the spouse to go? to uh, a country to minister to one place and the husband has a different call what if the husband has a call to go to a different place to minister different country to minister then he takes the whole family along it's very dangerous to leave your family behind your <laughs> wife and children and go alone to a new place it's not safe what if it's not the wife's calling and she has a different call the wife's calling is to follow her husband to submit to her husband that's the biblical. That's the biblical principle. Wives submit to your husbands out of reverence for Christ. Okay. So we also learned in um, in uh, receiving God's guidance. Remember, God says He will the the counsel that He gives the leader, He will also pass it on to the other people in the team. You know, uh, inner witness of the Holy Spirit, collective inner witness of the Holy Spirit. We learned that. Remember. Okay, and you need to read your books so you'll know. See, collective with inner with the Holy Spirit. So the so so the sometimes uh, I've I've known husbands who have, uh, you know, God is giving them a major move, and uh, uh, you know the the wife is he already knows will not be ready. The children will not be ready, but he's prayed about it and say, God, you speak to my spouse, and God has spoken, and you know they're amazed to see how God works. If the Spirit of God is speaking to you, He can even speak to your spouse. Right, he works together with the family. He doesn't work uh, individually. Yes, Sean. Yes. Suppose if you're like uh, ministering to um, a, a lady and you come across this topic about or, uh, this verse about like why you should submit to their husband. In this day and age, how do you convey that to the to that lady? Is my question, ma'am. In this day and age, everybody has to submit to everybody else. I submit to leadership. I submit to the senior pastor what he says, even though sometimes I want to do something with mine. I submit. I submit to my parents, even though I'm quite old enough, but I stay with them. I listen to what they uh, they say. We submit to the government. Uh, you, you know the, you know what rules have the government has got. We submit to the government. We submit to civic authorities. That's what uh, Paul uh, writes uh, in First Peter chapter two. We read it. Paul writes even to Timothy um, in Romans chapter uh, in Romans chapter thirteen. Paul writes about the whole thing. The whole chapter is dedicated uh, to obeying uh, civic uh, authorities. And Paul is saying, submit to civic authorities I will submit to the government don't resist the government uh, because they are appointed by God so we're all in different uh, stages of our life uh, submitting so wives have to submit to their husbands like husband submits to their bosses husband submits to their own parents we all have 
all in submission and that is uh, god has all placed us in authoritative structures authoritative structures at home authoritative structures uh, or government structures in the home in the workplace uh, in the in the local church um, in the body of christ and even in the you know uh, the, the government that we stay. So you know, by having to say wives, you need to submit to a husband is biblical because we all submit to different in different areas of our life. And that is God's kingdom governmental structure that he has placed. Yes, sir. Nina. Yeah, it's it's right that wife has to submit her husband. But now I've seen in general they don't want to submit actually. They're they're like Bible, okay, Bible, it's an old book how you do that now you know this is always here from all the <laughs> yes so nina saying uh, some women don't want to submit to their husbands they're saying why the bible is an old book uh, uh, they don't want to uh, submit um, well such women are basically being rebellious because they want their husband to submit to them so you can ask them when you don't want to submit you expect your husband to submit to you it's not going to happen you want to sub you want your uh, children to submit to you it's not going to happen now everything happens in we, we learned about positioning right when we position ourselves in the right time the right place we receive the blessings from uh, god so if we are not submit submitting uh, you know we can't expect uh, people under us also to submit um, to us no they are thinking like uh, now i have learned uh, I, I'm also working, uh, but some cases, okay, some cases husbands are treating their wives very badly. That also is really bad. But otherwise, even I'm like equal with you. Why should I? Yes, um, that's a good question. But you need to show them from the Bible that in the Bible it mentions that uh, uh, in Christ there is no Jew nor Greek, male nor female, uh, man nor woman. Okay, all are one in Christ Jesus. So even in the context of the governmental authoritative structure that God has brought about in the kingdom of God, where he has brought about this authoritative structure, uh, authority structure in the home, in the local church, in the body of Christ, um, uh, in the government. Um, uh, yes, so the home, we husband and wife are equal, equal in the sight of God. Uh, we have equal anointings. We all can flow in the gifts of the spirit. Uh, nothing. We have access to the word of God. Everything is equal. But even in that, God has placed man as the head. And so we need to uh, we need to obey that. So even in the local church, we all are ministers of God. We are all called a royal priesthood. priesthood but there is a priest who God has appointed. There is a pastor and we are, he's the shepherd. We are accountable to him we respect him we honor him we obey what he uh, says same also in the government in the government um we might be uh, you know having our own rights and all that but then there is a leadership that is there and we all need to adhere to that leadership even if the government is evil wicked that's what paul is telling in to the church at rome you know that uh, the roman government was extremely wicked and evil but what does paul write in romans chapter 13 you know submit to governing authorities don't resist them so does paul know what kind of government yes he knows what kind of government but even in that you know god is going to bring about your deliverance even though god can see you are suffering you're struggling but you do your part don't resist the government you know you submit to them so we are all equal in god's sight but yet we have this authority structure and it also says in the bible wives submit to your husband in reverence to christ just as husband submits to christ and christ as christ submits to god so even christ submitted himself to god so that's why it's important for us to read god's word uh, you know we've been looking at all of these scripture passages we've been seeing all of these so we need to interpret them and take them into the truth because the evil one has actually blinded them the truth so we all are equal but yet we have this authorities we have to uh, give in to this submit to the authority yes there yeah, somebody else had a question we are already yeah it's okay go ahead yeah please take the mic uh, like uh, here is like we are learning family before ministry so when we saw example uh, at uh, matthew 8 so some god told someone to follow me 
and he told like uh, i'll read this um, uh, um, then another of his disciples said to him lord let me first go and bury my father but jesus said to him follow me and let the dead bury their own de deed so and the other thing is god is telling if you wants to take, if you wants to follow me take your cross mm. so we have to leave everything meaning of that mm. so my question is this so how can we put uh, family before ministry okay good question i've already thought about it you've already read about it you've already done an assi assignment but does it matter we all forget so look at this point in family three postures okay three postures one life there are three examples what you said is one of the examples another two examples and so which stand do we take so if you read that you will understand okay so you read it now and uh, you let me know if you still don't understand i'll explain to you okay okay everyone thank you for joining we've way past five minutes of our time uh, we'll meet after break thank you